Watching Harmony and Diversity. And in this program, we're speaking to Father Victor Ferrugia, parish priest, St. Augustine's Church, Burke Street West, the city of Melbourne. In the last program, we explored Father Victor's spiritual evolution. And as we ended the program, it was quite clear that Father Victor has a, a, a penchant for healing from the heart. And out of that grow, grew an idea when he was uh, the parish priest at Our Lady Help of Christ Christians in East Brunswick uh, to develop a, an Oasis hands-on healing centre. And let's explore what that was about. Father, Oasis hands-on healing centre. Well, Oasis hands-on health, in fact, was something that arose out of a number of conversations with mm. Uh, particularly with um, Dean Vendinia, who was a chiropractor himself, and the doctor, uh, another doctor, and we all kind of shared this idea that, in fact, the healing of a person while manifesting disease in mind or in body or in spirit or in heart, in fact, is always needs to be handled from a variety of points. You know, sometimes somebody is sick physically, but is due to stress, for example, or somebody is anxious about something and maybe the hearts are, are out of focus, if you like. Yes. Um, their relationships with God, with others and themselves is kind of out of skew. Um, and so the idea was to, to say, well, I'd been in touch with Charismatic and Yule for a while, where healing and physical healing, inner healing were kind of you know, part of the movement, if you like. Yes. But I also was very conscious that really as a priest, I, I needed to confine myself, as, as a diocese priest particularly, in terms of uh, the spiritual aspect of a person, spiritual disease, if you like, for want of a better word, and that there are some areas that maybe a psychologist needs to handle, yes. and or psychiatrist, uh, or uh, other areas that, uh, say, might be more possible for a proper doctor to, to deal with, so that I didn't have to be all things to everybody in that sense. Mm. Um, and in order to become more and more aware of my own role, if you like, as um, a companion, one who communicates life and love, uh, particularly as I have come to be in Christ Jesus and mm. in the power of His Holy Spirit, mm. of the Holy Spirit, um, that, you know, uh, the boundaries, if you like, uh, enabled me to be more effective in not being kind of dispersed in that sense. And so, as you said rightly before, it was more the healing of the heart that I saw a, a part of the major problem, mine and others, along the way. And to a certain extent, the parish life, particularly here, you had this Sunday sermon, mm. and then we said goodbye, see you next time. Maybe a very small percentage might be involved in some groups, but you just hope to God that everything would go well at home, but there's no other, mm -hmm. no other kind of place of formation, if you like. Right. And uh, I often used to feel quite handicapped in that sense of um, there was something more that needed to happen here. Mm -hmm. And so the Oasis Center then began to try to bring in different people. Eventually we had to learn that uh, we needed to keep the medical and the paramedical quite distinct from each other and the spiritual and the clear boundaries of what that really meant. 
the practicalities of it, of course, evolved, and eventually Oasis Center Health continued with the with, with paramedical and medical and moved on from East Brunswick. But nonetheless, I continued to still be very caught up with and involved in walking, being with people, and eventually, of course, um, as time developed, I became parish priest at East Brunswick, which meant that I had many other duties there. Mm. Uh, but paramount underneath it all, I was searching for, we need to have real formation. of being not yeah. training. No. You train a dog, as you know. Mm. <laughs> but formation is what happens when you rub shoulders with someone and you walk alongside and mm. you learn from them. It's more of a accompaniment, if you like, yeah. which uh, not everybody is prepared to, but for those who are, those who begin to ask the deeper questions, you know, there's something mm. about that. that. That sort of multidisciplinary approach, is there, is there any precedent for that? Did, did you see any precedent anywhere in the world or anywhere in Australia for it? Yes, I remember it started in the south of France, actually. Oh, really? And uh, there was a community called the Beatitudes, who were already establishing kind of those kind of centers. Mm. I remember reading the, this book uh, by Philip Maud, who was one of the co-founders of the Beatitudes. And back then, he was talking about the healing of Christ and what does it mean to, mm. to uh, allow the person to come to a deeper in integration of, in their life. And to look at some of the problems that are presenting themselves today as maybe being the result of unfinished business from the past uh, and, and that maybe in that brokenness mm. there's an opportunity to, to be with this other person in compassion and from that be with them in themselves opening up to the grace of God and to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, and it, almost like um, b being with them and being able to reach the shores of their own inner truth, if you like, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, beginning to forge a relationship that's deeper than just with the people that they know, whatever, you know. So that seems like uh, we'll need to pick that up after the break. Okay. We'll be back. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. And today we're speaking with Father Victor Ferrugia, who's the parish priest, St. Augustine's Church in Burke Street West in the city. We're talking about the Oasis Centre yes. and bringing the multidisciplinary approach to healing people together. Uh, well, they're, you're bringing these people from different persuasions into the one mm. place. What were some of the problems that you, you encountered with that? Okay, well, um, I remember this eminent doctor. She is a famous pa pediatrician and she was one of our parishioners, actually, and she waited for five years before she came and approached me and she said, I know what you're about. I'm supportive of what you're trying to do here. Mm. She said, but you need to distinguish, you know, what is medical as medical mm. and what is paramedical. Mm -hmm. She said, because, you know, there's, there's not as much rigor with the paramedical mm. as there would be with the medical. And if you mix these two together, You'll, you'll, you'll definitely frighten one group away or whatever. But then that was one way where I began to understand that, okay, we need to be a little bit discerning mm -hmm. because, as you know, these days there's a whole supermarket of that fall under what they call paramedical kind of yes. therapies or whatever. So we had to be a bit careful that we weren't promoting something that was not founded and yet tested or whatever. Yes. On the other hand, uh, I had to be very clear as to, for example, psych psychology, psychiatry, who have a very specific aim mm. and often kind of therapy centered, uh, but it's quite different from 
what I would be contributing, which is more the spiritual development, which to a certain extent, even though at one stage I would have thought you can pray for healing, but the heart of what I've come to see now is that a spiritual development and the formation of the heart has more to do with not so much fixing things up as coming to the deeper truth of who we are, who I am, who you are. And to a certain extent, there's no kind of external authority that can force you into coming into your own. It's something that you come to if you find safety and welcome and someone who truly will walk with you. Yes. And uh, this is following, of course, what Christ did all the time. Mm. The classic is when he stepped into the circle of those about to stone the adulterous woman. Mm. And the first thing he did was just knelt at her feet and rose on the ground, mm. but waiting for the stones to come. And I, I never, never forget, you know, Cardinal Sunan saying, in the face of evil, God doesn't necessarily give you a quick answer or take it away, but he, or God, I should say, steps into mm. this mm. with us. Mm. And then from that place, together, um, experience this closeness, and from this closeness then comes the wanting to continue on this journey. So it is very much like relationship. Yes. And the relationships are not necessarily therapy centers. No. <laughs> and therefore spiritual growth, I've come to know, is not about fixing up doctrinal questions or whatever, albeit needing clarification all the time. But at the heart of things, mm. what Christ, I believe, was about was the kingdom. And the kingdom is never forget, it was contained in that wonderful verse from the burning bush mm. when God looked at Moses and he said, I've heard their cry, I've seen their suffering, I've felt their pain, and their cries have come to me, mm. and I've decided to come down and rescue them. Mm. And incarnate compassion, in other words. Yes. And uh, if you like, the fundamental problem with all of us is our need for true relationships. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about therapy, but certainly what gives life, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so I had to be very discerning, and particularly when people come and open up, uh, yes. it turned out to be confidentiality and, and what that really meant. Yes. So to tighten up all those things that, you know, we didn't mm -hmm. talk, cross-talk about even, if I referred somebody to, say, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, that there would only be so much, I, could, I would say, enough for the person to to begin their own journey with, that, with the psychologist. But from my part, I'd still have to learn to conserve that which is totally confidential and stuff like that. So all those things were growing pains, if you like, you know. What seems to be uh, suggesting, being suggested to me is, is that uh, doing it as a triumvirate, if you like, yes, together, was that how you did it or did you do it individually? Uh, we didn't sit at, no, certainly not in, in, at the same time, mm. no, 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 it was mm. more like cross-referral, mm. but um, those of us who were kind of part of that group, you know, we, we had a common vision. You know, mm. a lot of times, mm. belief in humanity. There was a shared belief in God. Uh, maybe not necessarily all the same. It wasn't just the Catholics. In other words, we no. just had ecumenical. Mm. Um, and to a certain extent, you know, we we were in agreement as to what would be or what wouldn't be allowed within each mm. field. You know, we were all very wary of anything that was not, yeah, with regards to some of the other therapies that was not really, uh, if you like, properly scientifically based and whatever it might be. Yes. Uh, um, but by and large, um, the building that we started at the back of the church, I remember, was had rooms that were accessible to all three, you know, and uh, um, we worked for a while. It was very interesting during that time, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's uh, it's uh, fascinating uh, to 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 think of these three disciplines coming together. In fact, what's what uh, and and we'll talk about uh, the outcomes um, 
after the break, but it seemed that the psychiatrists, the, the psychologists, the medical doctors, etc., uh, even part of the university course might be nice if they were acquainted with the heart so that the, th the three could come together more equitably. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with Father Victor Ferrugia, the parish priest at St. Augustine's Church, Burke Street City, Melbourne. This oasis concept uh, is fascinating, and you've brought these multidisciplinary approaches together. What are some of the outcomes that you saw during the time that you operated? Sure. Well, maybe uh, if I could quote one particular situation where mm. the parish nursing was part of the team, if you like, and the parish nurses were professional, still are professional nurses who have a sense of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And they know that in hospitals there's not enough time for treating the whole person. And in the local church and parish, there's not enough time to really acknowledge the problems that physically, medically people come back from hospital will need, so follow-up and stuff. And uh, I remember one particular uh, moment when we were dealing with a difficult situation with a student and um, around the table there was myself presenting priest and there was the parish nurse and then there was a psychologist and there was a education um, a person from education, there was somebody from the school and this was a social worker as well and it was just an incredible sort of United Nations mm. and the parents were just overwhelmed by the fact that their particular child you know, was able to be looked upon as a whole person not just treated as a problem mm. because each one brought in his and her own you know discipline if you like and there was a a wonderful synergy that happened at that time uh, with some very good outcome for the child as well mm. and and that in fact eventually you know the family all had to look at their own situation so it's a wonderful way now I know it doesn't happen all mm. the time mm. but one uh, such moment I, I remembered I thought yes this is what it should be working together in this way you know yes. that um, I suppose that was a particular moment in my role as parish priest over at East Brunswick and it's not so at the moment in, in St. Augustine's mm. but we can talk about that later but but certainly now um, even though I don't have that Oasis Centre I still hold on to the whole philosophy of the Oasis yes. and what I mean by that is that it brings on the whole idea that we're all on a journey, we're all on a pilgrimage. Mm. And that like walking through a desert, you know, we, we stop at an oasis to nurture, to reflect, to look at the journey thus far, to look at where we've got to go, to stop. And I suppose over the years, bit by bit as a priest, I saw and I see myself more and more as being there at the oasis mm. where people come and go um, nurture it, contribute and move on or whatever it is that is important to their journey of life yes. uh, uh, but while they're there to ensure that um, they do find rest and, and nurturing and hopefully um, a, a deeper sense of what is going on within the heart that's taking them on this journey yes. you know where are they heading you know the, the questions that arise that we give that that we we give space to you know often lead us into the next horizon if you like so the idea of the oasis has been attractive to me i remember carlo carreto mm. who used to write wonderful books and that was the title of one of his books that's it's not my original um, mm. and he talked about being an oasis in the city desert you know mm. and uh, it is a, a desert. I mean, uh, I live in the heart of Melbourne. I live in the west side mm. uh, where, you know, I'm 
very, very conscious of what a desert the city can be. Yes. Yeah. And um, for me, you know, the church for me has to be open-ended, welcoming, firmly, mm. uh, and and yet, you know, very much conscious that whoever walks through that door has a story, has a depth, has um, a relationship mm. with God, with others, and with himself and herself, mm. that hopefully in this oasis will become even stronger. And if need be, that we refer them, if they come up with a problem, to some other discipline, yes. hopefully they'll find a place of connection there, you mm. see. Mm -hmm. and referral as well. So, yeah, it, it Oasis is a powerful kind of image there. You know. It is indeed, and, and you, you mentioned several times the whole person, and uh, you'd be familiar with the fact that there's uh, uh, exhibitions run in Melbourne called Money, Mo Body, Mind and Spirit. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and that goes back to your point of different disciplines being introduced Yes. and disciplines which the veracity of which it c can't be determined. Ideally, and we only have a minute or so, ideally, uh, what would be some of the things that could be done to bring those disparate parts together so they could actually service the, the holistic being, taking the spiritual as the baseline? Yes. Uh, well, ideally, it would be like uh, sending out the feelers and see who would, who would want to be part of mm -hmm. this. Now, as I said to you beforehand, one of the difficulty, of course, is that when it comes to particular spiritual di you know, disciplines, yes. um, discernment is a very important part of all of this, that mm -hmm. not everybody who claims to Mm. bring healing in fact does so mm. and so there's got to be very care and the church has always been very very careful and mm. not to you know promote something that has not been at least have a good basis of veracity and stuff like that and that mm. will always be a bit of a challenge and that applies to spirituality systems in the church as well i mean the church is not a whole plethora of uh, spiritual movements have gone nowhere or if anything ended up in a sect or something you know so yes. so discernment is is probably the key one of the key elements um, of the old entering the monastery you know you just mm -hmm. first you became a, a, a postulant and mm -hmm. you watched them and then you became a novice they watched you and eventually they accepted you so there's a whole and, process and through that you went to spiritual direction that's and right spiritual direction is the, what we'll be talking about in the program next week yes thanks for watching and as i just said we'll be next week we'll be interviewing interviewing father Faruja in relation to spiritual direction and explore the nuances of that thanks for watching Shanti Om Allah